Got an itch I can't scratch, I'm missing a piece that completes a whole part of me, an open wound scar to see. Everybody come here, gather round, welcome to the freak show, the best in town. What the hell's wrong with me? I don't get along with anybody, honestly. I've been living in my own head constantly, thoughts jumbled round, think I need a new lobotomy. Wait, all these thoughts are too negative. I don't want to get lost in the sedative. Gotta show them what I got, I'm competitive. You know I'm about to go off, I won't let them win, I'll take a stab. I want to chase a bag, I want to way I can change all the things I lack. I gotta face the facts, I gotta taste and that. Got me obsessed with the rest, I got an itch to scratch. Hey guys, welcome back to Day Day 2K Universe Mode, and welcome to Friday Night Smackdown. That may or may not be on a Friday. I'm actually not sure when this is going up. I just know that I missed my goal of last week. Anyway, the night kicks off with Alec Briars and the Golden Aces starting off the show. Briars would take to the mic and state that he believes Teddy Long should have granted him the World Heavyweight title due to the fact that he was champion prior to WrestleMania, but nonetheless, he looks forward to showing Keith Lee why he is where he's at. Briars proceeds to go down the list. Two-time world champ, leader of the Golden Aces, and overall the hero of the WWE after single-handedly sending Bullet Club back to their respective brands. Keith Lee would end up interrupting and would state that at Double or Nothing, he is looking forward to getting the one-on-one -on -one match he was hoping for. And he's looking forward to showing Briars exactly what he means when he says that he is absolutely limitless. Briars would step up to Keith Lee before uh, seemingly getting intimidated and backing off, with Gary Gates stepping up in his place. Teddy Long would come out before things could escalate further and would tell Gates and Keith that if they wanted to fight, they'll have to wait until the main event. And now, for our first match of the night, we've got Group A Tag Team Action. Uh, this one is between two teams that won their first match and have a point on the board, now they're just trying to break away from the pack. Solo Sokoa and Braun Breaker will face off against The Way, Johnny Gargano, and Tommaso Ciampa. Gargano would try his luck against Sokoa, finding the street champ to be a tougher opponent to take down than expected. So, Gargano would take advantage of an opening made by a confident Sokoa, using it to tag in Champa, who perhaps could have better luck, but seemingly wouldn't. So, once Breaker was brought into the match, the way's strategy would be to rely on each other and utilize tag team offense and quick tags. Gargano would bust Sokoa open with a kneeling flatliner, but this wouldn't deter Solo. Instead, it'd fire him up.
Gargano and Breaker would both get tagged into the match, and whilst Breaker would attempt to grab onto Johnny Wrestling, Breaker would end up finding himself tripped and trapped in Gargano Escape. And despite the ref being in the way there, we could still see Breaker tap out very quickly. The way I pick up the victory tonight and the point. This officially gives Gargano and Ciampa the leading spot in their bracket, with the other three teams needing to find a way to catch up. Now, after the match, with Breaker and Sokoa trying to recover, they would look up to the stage and see Cody Rhodes is standing there, scouting them. Next, Buzz McGraw is accompanied by Jacob Cass as Buzz hopes to do the same thing that Cass did last week. That being, defeating the gold standard, Shelton Benjamin, to recover after the beatdown from Team Taz a few weeks ago. Shelton Benjamin was looking for his first win this season, so he blindsided Buzz by taking the fight to him immediately. Buzz would fire back a little bit, but Shelton's experience and strength would come into play. Shelton would hit a gorgeous moonsault on Buzz going for the cover afterwards, but only being able to pick up a two count. Buzz would counter Shelton's moonsault with an incredibly high-flying Phoenix Splash. And now, Buzz is starting to get back into the fight. But unfortunately, Shelton's power would once again come into play, leaving Buzz stunned and susceptible as Shelton connected with Paydirt. 
This would give the gold standard his first victory of the season. Sheldon Benjamin picks up the win and avoids being deemed an easy target for any future rookies later on in the season. That said, will we see the gold standard once again have a title around his waist this season? Or will this gold prove to be losing its shine? And with all that said, Jacob Cass would grab a microphone and state that himself and Buzz are already sick and tired of Taz and Hook, and their attacks from behind. So they lay down the gauntlet. Cass would propose the following challenge. Double or nothing, face to face, put your money where your mouth is, and face myself and Buzz in a tag team match. And as soon as the challenge would leave his lips, Hook and Taz would step out on the stage and would accept the challenge. Perhaps not the most intimidating challenge from Cass given Buzz's loss, but nonetheless, the match is on for double or nothing. Next, Roman Reigns can be seen in his locker room, visibly irate, as the Usos sit next to him. He can't even look at them. Roman goes on to explain something to the Usos, something he thinks that they missed. He states that they are his cousins, his family, his blood, so when they lose, he loses, and he hates losing. So he instructs them, no orders them, telling them that when they have their match next week, they are not going to just beat Motor City Machine Guns, they are to annihilate them. They are to eviscerate them. And with the orders having been given to the Usos, we now head to our next match, which is another addition to Fondango's Ballroom Challenge. And tonight's opponent for Dango is the Archer of Infamy, Damian Priest, who has to have Ricochet bouncing around in the back of his mind after Ricochet's challenge last week. Although he didn't seem to be distracted at all. That Irfan Dango was very sore after the week he's had so far. Either way, Priest would connect with the Reckoning, and after taking a second to separate Fandango from the ropes, he'd pick up the win. With minimal effort, Damien Priest picks up the win and earns SmackDown another dance partner. That said, he wouldn't waste much time before he would take to the microphone and would address Ricochet, telling him that he was waiting and hoping for the title match he had proposed. So he accepts his challenge, and he can't wait to take that intercontinental title from the one and only and live in infamy. Up next, the number one contender to the Women's World Championship and winner of the Women's WrestleMania Battle Royal, Ember Moon takes on the women's tough enough winner, the mistress of pain, Jessica Knight, who is accompanied by Xander Winters. This match comes about after last week where Jessica would seemingly imply Ember is nothing more than an afterthought, telling Amber Winters to face the mistress of pain once she retained the title against Ember. Tonight, Ember would intend to make sure she was far from an afterthought.
Unfortunately for Ember, the tide of this match would switch on a dime, with Jessica planting her with a Michinoku driver. This would seem to ring Ember's bell a bit, but the outcome of this match would seemingly be decided immediately afterwards by a brutal basement dropkick from Knight. Jessica would follow all of this up with a discus lariat just to put an exclamation point at the end of the match. The Mistress of Pain, Jessica Knight, picks up the victory, giving Ember Moon a loss ahead of her match against Amber Winters at Double or Nothing. The question now is ultimately, with Ember potentially injured to some capacity, and Jessica arguably becoming number one contender with this win, what does this mean for the title match? And now, prior to our first featured match, Mustafa Ali could be seen backstage heading towards the ring to accompany Mansoor, when he would be blindsided by Mace of Retribution. The two would brawl with Ali barely being able to get the upper hand thanks to a fire extinguisher, but as Ali went to capitalize, another masked figure would come out of nowhere and would lay him out with a boot to the face that would send him into the wall. The new masked figure would produce a can of spray paint before painting Retribution's flag on the wall over Ali's unconscious body. And with that, we're heading down to our first featured match of the night! As Kyle O'Reilly, fresh off his victory against Kevin Owens, takes on Monsoor. on the mat as he is with his strikes. I expect the full display of his skills in this matchup. Then you have a young superstar like Mansoor, so hungry to learn every time. No way! Oh, God, that, that, that's a bad landing! You have daring, and you have stupid. That was stupid. It was a daring decision that didn't provide the expected result. Yeah, stupid. Oh. Striking at will. out of the ring but needs to be mindful of the referee's count here. Whoa. Oh, strong impact. And then Sewell reverses it. Three. Nice takedown. Four. Oh, slap. Beautiful suplex. Mansoor is certainly an impressive talent, but I have to say, if he really wants to stand out and get an advantage here, he needs to find a way to show off more of a killer instinct. We know Mansoor knows how to impress, but that impressiveness needs to come with some edge to it tonight. And for better or worse, Mansoor learning a hard lesson right there. Yeah, O'Reilly just displayed some of his offensive capabilities. He may not be aware of the count. He's got to get back in. Oh, what a slap. Eight. Just like that, he's out of the hole. He's on his heels a bit now. At this 
stage of the match, they are clearly starting to feel the effects of this battle. Now, 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 break his arm. Vicious. O'Reilly was ready there. Devastating kick. Reversal after reversal. These two are ready for each other. Return fire from O'Reilly. Look at this. Jump. Striking at will. Shifts it back onto him. Wow. Oh, look at this. Is it enough, guys? Is it enough to get back in this match? Wow. So far, so good. situation right now. But O'Reilly can still tap into his martial arts to fight back. Better do it soon. And then sure gets stonewalled. Opportunity now for Kyle to capture some momentum. That might be what gets O'Reilly out of jeopardy. Bodies must be writhing in pain right now. The breaking... O'Reilly has him in the guillotine. We're fading fast. Whoa, this is surprising, Byron. Yeah, I'm not really sure why he would let him out right there. One after another. <laughs> Setting it up. Kyle looks like a city duck right now. Jab to the throat. Up and around. Goes down with a rolling cover. Can O'Reilly come back from that? Makes the cover. Two. That's it. The blind sweat put into this match. Well worth it. Mansoor, despite the distractions that would come with your ally being decimated backstage by two masked assailants, uh, he would pick he picks up the victory over Kyle O'Reilly. And now I'm sure Mansoor's mind is going to be set on getting retaliation against uh, retribution for Ali's attack. Next up, after the Group A match earlier tonight, we've got our Group B match of the round robin tournament between the Hart Foundation, Bret Hart and Jim the Anvil Nightheart, and G.O.D. Tamatanga and Tangaloa, who are accompanied by Lightning Kendrick. Which team will pull away from the pack in this contest? Tag team action underway, truly one of the hallmarks of sports entertainment. That's right, Cole. As a former tag team champion myself, I have to say these matches hold a special place in my life. Hits him with a gut wrench suplex. What impact! Enough already. Oh, Anvil got caught with a reversal. Tag made. Side headlock applied. Oh, oh, and a right hand for good measure. It's a rather crude facial reconstruction. That's not very nice. That's not right. Oh, foot just stomping down. Look at this. He just tossed the leg. Sudden cutoff from Brett. 
Ah, uh, setting him up for the shit breaker. Talk about dismantling your opponent. He's feeling the effects of that last hit. Looking to do it all himself. Just remember to tag your partner in so you can catch your breath and keep up the performance down the stretch. Caught the leg. Caught in a dragon scream changer. Now that'll do some serious damage. Measured knee drop. And tagged in is Jim the Anvil Neidhart. Uh, he could be looking for a submission here. And now looking to get locked in. Ramani saves his partner there. Man, that one was in tight. He got whipped into that corner. Body shots over and over. One to the jaw and then... To the midsection, something flip oh, into a power bomb. Uh oh. Yoko Suka cutter. Oh, He's got the answer for that one. Left hook in the mush. Short line hits its mark. Nothing to laugh about here for the angle. Yeah. Face rate. This is nasty. Timely counter by Angle. And the spot with a counter of their own. Boom right across the small of the back. Drops the hammer right on the lower back. Him in. Tagged into action. <laughs> Able to reverse. Great job. Refocusing to reverse that. Well, oh, anticipated that. There's a tag. Opponent it off the ropes. Now rearrange the spine. Carefully measured knee drop. Oh boy, he's stalking him. Watching for an opening. Oh, ouch. Something in the corner. Tag made. Oh, oh there's a kick right in on his face. Double of punishment. What's he planning to do here? Roll him out his belly. Single leg crab. Single leg Boston crab. Cinched in. And hey, watch this. Letting him free. Adam where he wanted him, but maybe he has something better planned. Oh, look at that torch of their opponent. Oh, this isn't going to be good. Oh, oh, man. Knee strike left face. Tag made, fresh man in. Punch right now. That. Delivering the suplex. 
And tagged in is Jim the Anvil Neidhart. Oh, watch out. Gosh, Lord in Facebook. Uh oh, look at the torque. There's no escape from the camel clutch. Yeah, I'm not quite sure what this man shouldn't tap out. This is about career longevity, self preservation. How do you counter the camel clutch? He's prying their hands apart. And this might not have a pleasant ending. Mention up the driver. Oh, God. Uh-oh. In trouble in the grass. Submission locked in tight. Don't let it go. No escape. This and there's the save. First. Hit drop. I've been waiting to see that. Anvil stumbling into the line of fire. Timely counter by Anvil. Tag switching it up. He's tagging out. He's ejected from the ring. Red Hart with the tag. Two. Oh, the arm's trapped. Oh, the slam. I don't know how there is anything left in these superstars' bodies. Yeah, the tank is being emptied tonight. And tag. He did it. Let's go. trouble now. These two teams have gone to war, Cole. Of course they're going to wind up with a few battle scenes. Jumping knee drop. So precise. Knew what was coming there. There's the real kick. Oh. Up the top, Buckles. What's he going to do? You can see as he rises how vulnerable of a position he's in. From the top, catches nothing but air. Unpacks a well-placed punch. Kick opponent goes down, so it's a great agility and painful. I think the writing's on the wall, and it is not good for the hitman. Oh, he left it with these knee strikes. Makes him pay with a counter.
his side. And the Hitman still shows no signs of slowing down. That is the excellence of the Hitman just fighting to his last breath. And Anvil is pushing through the pain to deliver some of the opposition. At this stage, you know Anvil's thinking about bringing things to a close. Definitely not where you want to be right now. Just carried like a ragdoll here. They need to be aware of a count out right now. He is rubbing up the engine. He's not going to let anything stop him. He climbs back into the ring just in time. That was getting close. Reaches his partner for the tag. Yeah. This is just brute power. Nice German. The WWE Universe is showing their appreciation for the action they're seeing. It has been an absolute war out there. These superstars. Another big move. for his team. Caving in the abdomen. Well, that's one way to leave the ring, I suppose. Ah, oh, what a smash. That is just insulting. Going up top. From the top. in the bottom turnbuckle. Oh, drop. Red Hart with the tag. Tag. He's in off the tag. Losing attack to the body. The Hart Foundation pick up the submission win and their second point in the tournament, thanks to a sharpshooter from Brett and some excellent interference from Nightheart. Maybe these two will be the first SAG champs of SmackDown this season. And finally, it's time for our main event, as the limitless Keith Lee takes on the new beast incarnate, Gary Gates. Can Keith Lee pick up some valuable momentum before his world title match? And here we have a superstar with a big chip on his shoulder. He has certainly felt overlooked recently. Well, he has a chance to change that perception in this matchup. And opposite them is Keith Lee, a guy whose pure fighting spirit might be unmatched. Forget the odds, forget the stakes. Keith Lee always gives his best and never goes down easy. And that spirit has pushed Lee to some amazing heights. We'll see how it serves him here tonight. Launching. Crossbody for the top. Got all of it. And it's turned around on Lee. Wait a minute. Setting in. Devastating submission coming. All right now he's looking for any way to break out of this. And he does. Corey, if you're Keith Lee in this matchup, how do you use your physical gifts to forge a path to victory? The shortest path to victory is a straight line, so if I'm Keith Lee, I'm looking to steamroll right over my opponent, overwhelm the opposition with my physical abilities, and never let them retaliate. Target acquired and destroyed. Oh, right in there. Really 
just laying it in. Headed to the top now. Sky high and finds a counter. Up high. from that incredible well of... Keith Lee looking to finish this. Oh, Lee on the verge here. One, two. He stays alive. He stays alive. Oh, I thought that was game over. Pure gut. Uh-oh. Oh, flipping the script out of that. Being carried around with ease. Turns the tables. Each competitor showing they've done their homework. Oh, a shot to the side of the face. He's done. Oh, man. This is a time where Lee's fighting spirit will have to come into play. Keith Lee gets out of the way. Back breaker. He must have seen that coming. Oh, hard impact in the corner. One scouted. He had it scouted. And that one misses the mark. Able to reverse that one. Right to the kidneys from behind. Oh, loving blow. Oh, tossed aside. Determination about to end this. Keith Lee, ground zero. This match is all Keith Lee. Two. And what a win for Keith Lee. Keith Lee picks up the victory after a battle of titans. That bounce had way more airtime than I expected. Perhaps that will be the fate of Alec Briards at Double or Nothing. Will Keith Lee become the first World Heavyweight Champion of SmackDown this season? And with that, this week's edition of SmackDown comes to a close. If you like what you saw, hit that like button. If you are new here and you want to see more Day Day 2K Universe Mode or just more content from me in general, hit that subscribe button. Uh, Double or Nothing will be coming out tomorrow, so make sure to come back for that first pay-per-view of the season. Uh, if you want to follow me on any of my other social medias, Instagram, Twitter, you want to follow my Twitch account or join my subreddit. Links are all in the description down below. And yeah, I'll see you guys later.